Hello dudes and doodalinas, welcome to another video with the Honda CRF 300L. Let's start this video right. this is a good spot to stop and admire the scenery and let's talk about the CRF a little bit if you want to see more riding videos just post a comment this is just a quick little uh, recap on what's going on with the Honda and what I've done with it and uh, just uh, might as well show you around a little bit at the same time so I'll get my gear off a little and uh, let's talk about the bike and the updates. I thought I would make this quick update on the Honda and how things are going with it after 770 kilometers on the clock. So I have about 200 kilometers to go to the factory service and after that I can really really drive it because right now I'm trying to stay underneath 6000 rpm. I've made a few mods to the bike so far so I'll show you those and uh, what's coming to the bike and what's coming to the channel later on this uh, springtime. We are pretty much in the middle of the winter so it's still gonna take a couple of months for all this to melt down but uh, I'm still gonna keep riding the little Honda and showing you how things are going with it. So here she is. I've done a few little mods so far like uh, the Acerbis hand guards you can see here. I did a little bit of a poor man's options on, on this uh, hand guard setup because I'm using the OEM bar and these don't really fit it that well. Um, I had to use a little bit of a spacer here and use just a six millimeter bolt here. I bought the bolt at a hardware store. It should be the hardest bolt you can actually buy but it's still six millimeters so this is not gonna test out very well underneath uh, some heavy heavy crashing. I will tell you if this breaks and when it breaks so I'm at the same time testing if you can actually make this work with the OEM bar and the OEM uh, threads in here. Uh, some people say you have to swap the bar, you have to drill the hole bigger and make it uh, like a 10 millimeter thread, but uh, I'm trying it with the six millimeter because I was a little bit uh, lazy. <laughs> so I will post in the channel if it works and when it breaks, if it breaks. So you can see it from there in a future video or, or a future community post. And I had to modify these a little bit because the OEM bars have this middle section here and it just comes in the wrong place. So I couldn't get these to reach here. I had to mount it there, but uh, it's fine. I just had to drill a hole here, so no big deal. Then I have the Acerbis uh, frame guides, frame guides, frame guards. What am I saying? I like these because this uh, protect the braking system here on the rear brakes. And they, it, the fit and finish is absolutely gorgeous on these. And uh, then I have some kind of a rear brake saver here. Maybe if some bigger sticks here in the Finnish uh, forests go here, it will save my brake lever and uh, probably save some kind of a situation that could, could occur. Underneath the bike, I have the AXP protection. And you saw a separate video of this if you, if you watched it. I like it because it's protecting the linkage as well. There was some issues with the install, but it's all in the video that I made. What else? What else? I guess, well, the quad lock wireless charging pad. I just mounted it there with the mirror mount. It's fitting here perfectly. And I routed it directly from the battery, so there's all that jazz on the other side of the bike. And I have a Yoko back here for these Finnish winter conditions, so my hands don't freeze just a cheapo bag from a local store, uh, like 25 euros. I have a heating outlet for my helmet here, because my helmet is a snowmobile helmet. It's right there. So I have a visor that is electrically heated, so it doesn't freeze up in these conditions. But yeah, that, that's pretty much 
pretty much it for the bike so far. I have heated grips, of course. Here you absolutely need them. And then I have this Krieger OS plate here, but I don't have it currently in place. But I can use the same bags with this bike than I, that I use uh, with my Tenere 700. So it's saving me a lot of money. Krieger is a really nice company. They sell the plates and all the setups for both bikes. So I can just swap the bags from bike to bike. Maybe I will travel with this bike later this year or at some point, who knows, because I like to ride it. The suspension, I still have the OEM suspension on. And as you can see, I, I like to ride pretty fast here, not, nothing crazy. And there's not many jumps here in the Finnish forests, but uh, the small ones that I have here, uh, they do cause some issues with the OEM suspension. You really have to be careful about your speed on certain parts of these uh, roads because uh, the rear end can jump up really easily and lose all traction with this OEM setup. So I just have to watch it out a little bit. But yeah, I like the OEM setup as well. It's, it's not perfect, of course, but so the bike is not that pricey anyway. But when, it, when the rally rate level one comes, I am probably gonna get a lot more from the bike. And hopefully I can make some kind of a nice video for you guys about the rally rate setup. I'm getting the level one, so that is the 210 millimeter travel. So I'm squatting down a little bit from the level two. It's like 40 millimeter difference because I'm only 175 centimeters tall. So I thought the level one would suit me better. I don't want the bike to get overly, overly uh, tall. It's gonna be manageable with these stubby legs that I have. <laughs> so yeah, that's a quick little update. And just to end this video, if you can give me a thumbs up, it would help massively for people to see this video. I am a small channel, so people don't usually find these videos automatically. You have to give them some love and comments so, so people can notice them. And the YouTube will then recommend the video possibly to someone. So thank you for following so far. I, I'm really flabbergasted about uh, even getting to plus 500 subscribers. It's been nice, nice to feel the community and uh, talk to you guys in the comments. Uh, I will try to answer every comment, even the negative ones, because uh, it's all feedback uh, that I need to take in. I've told you on the previous videos, I am about 82 kilograms without gear on, so maybe 90 plus with gear. So if I position myself on the bike correctly, the suspension is taking this happily, no problem. It is a little jumpy though. It just jump me around like all the time so you have to be a little careful with it if you're not jumpy is not the right word it's bouncy it's really bouncy yeah it's bouncy <laughs> but it's fun It is possible that because it's minus something degrees Celsius here, uh, the suspension is a little bit more stiff during this winter time. But when it comes to plus 20 to plus 30 in the summer, it might be even more loose. I'm not sure how much that affects the thing, affects things uh, because the temperature is uh, definitely gonna make the oils a little stiffer. But at the moment it's, uh, not too bad actually <laughs> but then again the moment I say that it's gonna <laughs> fling me up and down you don't see that but uh in the video probably oh yeah but it's so much fun guys <laughs> Oh shit, do I have my helmet on? 
I always forget to put it locked it up. Could be dangerous. Oh, ho, ho. it's so nice. The rear tire is so flickable in these conditions. Just put in some throttle even at fourth gear and uh, you're drifting here. It's so great. I'm going to say that this is the best thing you can do after work to just chill out. Get all that tension off your shoulders and uh, just have fun. <laughs> oh yes! <laughs> Yeah, that's the video guys oh I have ABS on <laughs> can't break with the back tire okay that's it for today until the next one bye